Thanks for stopping by. Mike Irwin here. I wanted to throw up a quick tutorial to show you guys a little technique that I've used in some of my tracks, um, making use of one of Logic Pro X's uh, MIDI effects plugins um, that will allow you to take something like filter cutoff and, and generate a little bit more of an interesting movement there. Um, okay, jumping right in. I've got eight bars here um, that I've thrown together. It's a, it's a basic beat and some instruments just to kind of show you the technique that we'll be working with. So let's give that a listen. <laughs> mainly concerned with here, I'll go ahead and solo it out, is this bass line section. Um, and I'll leave the beat in there for time, but, and, it, and it's, it's this. Okay, and you could do this in one track. Right now it's in three different tracks, and I'll kind of explain why that ended up being the case here in a minute. But this first section here, um, simple enough long notes and this was just recorded in with you know moving the mod wheel manually uh, you, you know as, as you played which is easy enough we've all done it this section in here um, where it goes kind of from a slow uh, wobble hate to use the term um, into kind of a faster modulation and then back down to slow that's not so easy to do manually with a mod wheel and it's a total pain in the ass to try to draw in down here with a mouse so um, here's a way you can use one of those effects plugins to to make that a little bit easier. Um, I'll go ahead and start from scratch. I'll uh, let's see. I'll just mute these out and um, mute that out, and we'll just I'll show you how I did that from scratch. So software instrument, new track, create. I'll use a massive synth. Any synth will work. You know they've all got parameters these days. You can modulate. Um, you know from various sources. And um, Massive is just easy enough and it's handy, so I'll throw an instance of Massive on here. Um, and let's see, I'll just go ahead and load up a preset that um, I used in one of my recent songs that I have handy. And it's... Go ahead and get some audio on that track. And... Okay, and this right here, this filter cutoff knob is what we're going to be dealing with doesn't do a lot for this individual um, particular track so let's see we'll do a low pass um, just for argument's sake throw everything so there's no mistake it is filter one we'll turn filter two completely off now we've got some pretty obvious cutoff movement there in our filter and I think if I give it a little bit of resonance it'll make that stand out a little more Great, so now I'll throw an instance of the MIDI modul uh, yeah, modulator on here and I'll leave massive in the background so you can see how it's being impacted. Now, over here on the left hand side, we've got an LFO, low frequency oscillator, doesn't generate sound, it generates movement. Movement we can apply to any assignable parameter that we choose. I'm not going to go into synthesis. The internet's full of synthesis tutorials, and quite frankly, they don't need another one by me because I'm not a master and it would suck. So uh, here's, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll use a sine wave pattern here. You've got a symmetry control here, um, you know, for various effects. I like for this to put it right in the middle, kind of gives us a good middle starting point that I think is better for timing on the beginning of a note. Uh, trigger, we'll put that on single so that every single note you hit does in fact trigger the LFO from the beginning. Here's your rate, and as you can see right now, this is moving at quarter note speed. I'll dial it down to half. It's a little bit easier to see. Now it's going a little slower. What it's basically doing here is genu generating a MIDI control number 0 to 127, 20, 127 back down to 0 over and over again. And right now it's doing that to mod wheel. I'm not going to leave it there. That's just for, you know, the sake of not stepping on something else in the project, uh, you can go down here and just pick something like, you know, 117 that you know is far out of your way. 
that's sitting there generating that on 117. So now if we go over to Massive and we go to this cutoff wheel and we uh, right click on it and go to MIDI Learn, we're not going to have to hit anything. It's going to pick it up right away because this plugin is sitting there generating it. And there it is. Now you can see the Zellophon moving the cutoff knob back and forth for us. So now if we hit a key, there's our filter movement. Nice and even, nice and boring. Over here on the right side of the envelope though, we've got the envelope. Right side of the plugin, we've got an envelope. Turn that on and envelope to LFO rate, we can crank that all the way up. So now when we hit a key, watch the LFO. Slow to fast and then back down to slow. Follows the movement of the LFO is going to follow the various phases of the envelope. Okay, that right off, I'll crank this up here so you can just kind of see it in a little bit better resolution. Um, that's probably not going to be a great timing for our beat. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, and the trigger here is going to be the same. We want the envelope to re-trigger every time it, it hits a new note. So, um, and, and in terms of, uh, you know, just dialing in the sound, um, this knob here, envelope to LFO amp, what that's going to do is, if you listen now, when it gets to the fast section, it's real helicoptery. It's you know, it's got the buffeting effect. It's got too much of the low end of our low pass filter still making it through. Um, what we're going to do though is, if we crank this up, say to you know around 75 percent. Now watch, it's going to take the low end of the LFO movement and amplify it up as we move through the envelope. See, so the floor of our LFO here is now cranked up to somewhere around, if you look at the cutoff knob, it's not going all the way closed when it gets up here in the fast. So that's going to be a little bit more, you know, overall mix friendly. So if we give that a listen, if we put a MIDI region in there, go ahead and do that, create an empty MIDI region, drag that out, let's just go ahead and knock this down to two bars so we can just deal with that. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Go ahead and put a note in here. Yeah, there we go. And pull our, our plugins back up. Okay, great. Way out of time. So it's uh, ramping up a little too fast. Let's drag that out to about 1300. Um, the hold, I know that's going to be way too long. So uh, let's see. No, that held for a little uh, too short. So I'll drag that out to about 280. And pretty close, but it kind of came down too fast. Let's drag that release out a little bit, 1300 and 1200. So uh, close to a you know symmetrical you know uh, movement there. And that's that's pretty good. Um, so what we can do here now is um, put that in place unmute that, drag that back out, and you know, here's what we've got. Now in there you, you can kind of hear the reason that I cut this up and, and flesh it out a little more anyway was I felt like this section here where it goes from slow to fast had kind of a little bit of a drag in it, so I, I, I bounced it out, left the tail section, which I really liked, which was the fast to slow. I redid this section where it's just that. And on that particular one, what I did is I did not modulate the rate of the LFO. As you can see, the envelopes turned off. I used a quarter note triplet um, speed in there. I just you know, felt that was a better rhythm for that one little section in there. And so then, you know,
you know, I felt like that just kind of like, you know, was a little bit more dialed in and, and I liked it a little bit better. You know, you probably chalk it up to a matter of taste. They're both all right, you know, you could go either way. Um, but that's just why that ended up being three separate tracks on this one particular thing. So um, that's it. Uh, you know, some of you are probably wondering, you know, why would I do that? I've got sense. Sense have LFOs. You're right. Um, Massive's got LFOs. I could have taken an LFO, modulated cutoff, used another LFO to modulate the rate of that LFO and done pretty much the same thing. However, a lot of times when we're putting tracks together, we've got, um, you know, whether we're dealing with sounds that we're synth synthesizing on our own or we're using factory presets, you don't end up usually with two extra LFOs laying around, uh, you know, for obvious reasons. Developers aren't that generous with those things. So, um, you know, you could look at this whole thing as just a way of using a plugin like this to add an LFO to um, any existing synth to modulate any parameter. I mean, everything, you know, in these days, everything's MIDI assignable, and you could, you know, use this plugin in many different ways. So um, I hope you guys found this, uh, you know, interesting, um, helpful in any small way. These are great plugins. I hope that they, you know, improve on them in the future and, and take them into new areas and add new features. I, I like using them and I look forward to using them more. Um, and that's it. Um, check out uh, you know my, my channel. I look forward to putting more of these tutorials online later. And um, you know subscribe. Uh, click on my Facebook link there, Mirror Audio on Facebook. I've got uh, you know my own music there as well as other audio related topics that you could uh, check out. And um, I appreciate it. And you guys have a good one. Thank you.